So efficiency has been on my mind as of late. How can I be more efficient? Efficiency is important, right? Got to use the right tool for the right job and be efficient with that tool. You don't use a butter knife, right? If you've got a C-clamp on your cold air intake and you need to loosen up that C-clamp, you don't use a butter knife. Use, be efficient. Use a screwdriver. Get the job done more quickly and just, just be done with it. Actually, you can flip that in reverse, too. <laughs> you know, If you're buttering a piece of bread, the right tool for the job is the, the butter knife, right? Not the screwdriver. So use the right tool for the job. So I thought I need to be efficient with my time. We want to create content here at GTC Traders, but at the same time, we have to be efficient. So how can I be efficient? Because I'm, I'm managing a single family office structure. Uh, I'm junior partner in some firms. I'm senior partner in other firms. I think, what is there? There's six different companies, trust structures. Point being, I have to be efficient with my time. <laughs> so one of those companies is a closed proprietary firm. It's closed off. Don't ask about it, please. That, that's, that's the answer if you ask about it. It's closed. Okay. Um, you don't even know the name of it. So, And that's very much to follow regulations on closed proprietary firms. Name won't be published. It's not going to be published. So, So, but for that firm and many firms, this is not just us. This is just a thing in the industry. You have what's called a morning note or a weekly note sometimes. Sometimes you'll have a weekly note, you know, sort of looking ahead at the next week or a morning note where, you know, sort of a senior partner or principals of the firm will put something together. Well, what are we looking at for the next day? And at the same time, every time I've done one of these endeavors where I attempt to show things publicly, I've always I've always talked about it as sort of a, a look over the shoulder, right? So you're sort of, ha, ah, get it? Look over the shoulder. See the, the hand thing? Although I, I'll be very frank, I stole this from Rob, but it's a look over our shoulder. So I can be efficient with my time by consolidating all of these concepts. Excuse me, I'm gonna take a sip of the coffee. I can consolidate all these concepts. We'll do maybe what I have to do anyways. I have to do a morning note for the closed prop firm. So how about I consolidate that and sort of put out there something publicly, look over the shoulder, <laughs> get it, get it look over the shoulder and you'll see how many firms do this. This is not, as I said, we're not special, but just sort of a look over our shoulder as to a weekly note. And maybe if, if I can consolidate my time and make things more efficient, maybe who knows, maybe this will be a daily note, right? But just a look ahead to the next week. So just things to be aware of as we go into the markets and maybe we can make this a feature. We'll see how it goes. Anyways, Main thing is what's on the calendar. What's on the calendar, you can find this. I, I made this basically so that anybody could use this. This is trading economics. You can come up with a profile, put your, con there, there's other tools that I use, but I thought what's something that anybody could use, right? So I put in the biggies, Germany, the Euro area, Japan, United States, right? That sort of thing. So, or at least they're, they're majors to me and you can consolidate and customize your grid that way. Uh, there's a few things on the week ahead, uh, just as far as the calendar is concerned. Big thing, very obviously, and I think it's gonna hold everything up is, and I have more to say on that, but just consolidating our, our thoughts for the week ahead is very obviously the Fed. The Fed's on Wednesday, that's the biggie. 2 p.m. to 2.30 is when the press conference starts. That's the one everybody's gonna be waiting on as to their comments. There's a few others. Some auctions, I, I'm sort of interested, just things I'm interested in. I'm sort of interested in any news surrounding the 52-week bill auction in Japan. There's some other auctions here in the U.S. Interest rates rules basically the financial world. So although these are not, you know, the big interest rate conversation is going to set around Wednesday and the Fed, these are other interesting little tidbits, right, uh, that I'm sort of interested in. People have been interested with what's going on in Japan lately. I am as well. All right, uh, building permits, balance of trades on Tuesday, but that's going to be overshadowed by the Fed, quite frankly. Inflation rate year over year. That might, that, again, that one might be interesting. That's on Thursday uh, for Japan. But again, the Fed's usually like a two-day process. So that's usually a two-day process because not only is the market just going to have its initial back and forth because of you know lack of liquidity, li liquidity comes in, announcements, you know, market makers basically playing those widening spreads, which they should. But then everybody for the next day and a half, it takes everybody a while to adjust positions if they need to do so, right? So 
Although I'm very interested in Japan's inflation rate uh, on Thursday. What else do we have? We have retail. That's that's uh, the UK. Yeah. So that that's sort of looking over the next calendar. The Fed's going to overshadow everything. And we also have some earnings, which again, the Fed's going to overshadow it, but it's something to be aware of. There's many earnings, obviously, next week. These are the ones that stood out to me. AutoZone on the 19th. Uh, one sort of look into that for sort of econometric sort of reads at times. That's on Tuesday. FedEx is a big one. That's why I sort of highlighted it. That's on the 20th. And then we got uh, General Mills as well on Wednesday. But again, those are going to be overshadowed by what's going on with the Fed. And here's what's interesting in markets. I was just talking with DCP on Twitter about this is I'm not sure I've ever had such a spin scene. We, we at the prop firm have ever had like spin the bottle, a neutral stance in as many markets for so long. A lot of that, I think, has to do with interest rates. Interest rates rule the financial world. They just do. There's another freebie here. Over here, uh, Chatham Financial produces sort of, sort of some cool looks at the SOFR curve. So, and the the Fed dot plots around that. So, this is something I'm not talking about trading this, right? GTC Traders is going to be purely equity based, but you need to know what's going on with rates. You just do, and you need to understand them. So, this is the three month SOFR curve and surrounding the dot plots, which we'll have probably an update on the dot plot. So, that should prove interesting the next week. I've had my eye on that. Right, so I'm going to be keeping my eye on how Fed the Fed decision impacts a lot of this and the reads around that. One thing I want to say is if interest rates here in Oct of 2025, I don't know where that's at. I don't know if that's out in the, is that the golds, the blues of the golds or the purples? That doesn't predict interest rates at 3.85% in September, October 2025. If you talk to an interest rate trader or no interest rate traders or no interest rate trading, you know this, right? The front of the curves where there's the, most volatility around news, but as you get closer to the front of the curve and closer in time, there's less volatility because the market pretty much figures out rates. Back here is hedge flow. And this curve is consistently and constantly just morphing and changing. So a lot of what goes on is just back end hedge flow. And what we mean by that is somebody puts on a position in the reds and they want to hedge it off while they do so out here. So that's not as much a prediction. You want something as far as what the market thinks is probabilities. This right here is your best bet. Um, it's basing it target rate probabilities for the September 28th meeting. So you, you can see right there what it's pricing in, right? So, and that's the 525 to 550. So that's pretty much priced in. In other words, the, the volatility around the, towards the front of the curve and towards the Fed is, gets less and less because the probabilities are more known. That's, that's the way to look at probabilities. Very obviously, if you go out to something like July, 2024, those probabilities are not as certain. So you see that show up in the curve here. So I, I don't know. I've just seen that recently where people are like, ah, well, you know, they're going to be cutting the rate by then because the curve predicts it. Uh, no, it doesn't. If you want to know more probabilities, you, you're a little more certain the closer you get to the front of the curve, the further back. I'm just looking at three months so far. There's also Fed fund futures and things like that. There's so many interest rate products. Although to reiterate what we've been saying on the Twitter stream, there really should be a credit instrument showing market risk, something like commercial paper. I'm not going to get into that whole sermon. But anyways, that's that. And that's really what's been ruling everything. So as we look ahead, that's why the Fed's announcement, the press conference is going to overshadow everything. Now, looking at markets specifically, as I was saying in our, I'll just take you through. I'm not going to show you some of our proprietary tools that we use, but I'm going to take you through uh, just basically what we look at in the morning, right? So when I look ahead uh, to the next week, we look at various major markets. Uh, I've done this for a long time. Guys who have known me for a long time know I do this, and I'm not alone. Many, many do this. Since about, I would say, August, we've had the neutral stance on equities. Uh, if you want to look at this particular index, I've spoken in the past what I think about indices. You can find a whole podcast on it, right? But basically, we've had a neutral stance. You look at something like the VIX, we've obviously cooled down, but we also look at VIX term structures. And I don't see at least the way we use term structure in the VIX. I haven't really seen anything of note at all, really, to, to give any sort of concern. I also look at... Higher yielding, sometimes I'll use an ETF as a look and look at the way that ETF is comprised. How do I put this? 
to sort of give me just a general bias view, right? It's not like when I say we're neutral on equities, we have no position. We have that position in equities. It's it's more of a biased view. Like how are we thinking about this particular market? And then that can help form your few views later on. Hi, and I use ETFs to do that because I know the way that like this particular ETF is comprised and it and it tells me something about the, both the market and just our view of it at the moment, which can color other views, right? So this is high yield, you know, uh, stuff in the spoos. And we've had, again, look at that. Spin the bottle, we don't know. Just a sort of a neutral stance on S&P 500 sort of uh, high yield. You look at treasuries, right? And I'm gonna use ETFs again because we are very equities based. Something like towards the front of the treasury curve, uh, you know, one to three year, like SHY, very, uh, very neutral. Again, look into uh, IEI, uh, neutral. Thinking about it in curve terms, I hope you see a clearer picture. This is going out a little farther, seven to 10 year ETF, IEF. We're still neutral, but this sucker could break down at any second. And going farther out on the curve, you look at, uh, let me see here, I'm looking at my notes as well. TLT, we've been bearish on price, obviously bullish on yield. So that's our look at treasuries. This is the market that has confounded me as of late. Uh, high yield. This is JNK, but high yield has confounded me. Um, I've got to go back over some of, something on my to-do list. Is I've got to go back over the holdings of this sucker to see how it's comprised. Because high yield has held up. I like I, it just confounds me. I just don't know how, especially with the stories that come out here coming out of high yield markets and guys that cover high yield a lot uh, that I'll interact with. I have no idea how this market's holding up as well, but you got to go with price. So we're also neutral on price, neutral on yield. Moving on to the next major market we look at. This is GSG. Uh, look at commodities as a whole. We have been bullish. Now, as far as my macroeconomic stance, do you see how things are maybe blending here and dovetailing with one another uh <laughs> i've had this whole thesis regarding this gully we are in which i don't know what, which way it's going to go are we going to slide back towards higher inflation or are we go, you know did they do it um i think at this point i'm more of a higher for longer guy h4l right hashtag h4l uh, i'm more of a higher for longer guy because the fed has the room to do so and we are seeing as you see here and commodity prices as a whole, you're seeing the input costs starting to ramp back up again in commodities as a whole. When we look at crude oil structure, I'm not seeing anything that slows that down on crude oil front. When I look at the crude oil term structure, it's like, <laughs> I hate to say it, but risk is on higher prices, folks. So you look at something like, you know, USO, uh, bullish, very bullish. <laughs> We're bullish on commodity indices as a whole. We're bullish on crude oil. And uh, this is very interesting. This is UGA, which is a look at gasoline, which you can use to hedge, which I have. Uh, your own household's gasoline costs and fuel costs. I hope people realize they can do that. We've had a neutral stance and I'm not plugging away from the neutral stance yet. You know, very obviously there's a lot of good hedging going on here. So fuel prices have not risen as dramatically. That's the hedge, you know, the, the basically, uh, solid hedges placed there by the commercial interests such that we have not seen a commensurate rise as much in gasoline prices. However, I will switch to bullish if it's time to switch to bullish. But at the moment, when it comes to gasoline prices, we are neutral. Again, do you see the whole spin the bottle thing? It's like we're neutral on so much and I think a lot of that has to do with rates and I think a lot of that has to do with but the market knows that, right? We're, we're all hinging on what happens with inflation next. I think it's not just input cost driven. I also think it has a lot to do with over restrictive regulations that create a faux, um, how would I describe it? Sort of a, a, a faux supply chain problem. Um, regulations that are overly burdensome on that will add to an inflationary problem. You know, a 19, as I've said in podcasts, a 1977 to 1980 part two Right. When it comes to gold, uh, we're, we're neutral on gold. And when it comes to silver, we are also neutral on silver. Uh, so I don't see any reason to change that as of yet. 
I would like a big dump. As people who have known me know, I do collect bullion. So I would love that and the old uh, trust assets, but uh, we're just not to a place. I've got a model where I sort of look at getting into actual silver bullion purchases, and we're just not there. And finally, the US dollar. The US dollar, we have been bullish on. We've been bullish on for a while, so much for uh, you know the dollar collapse. The impending dollar collapse that I have heard about for, I don't know, 30 years that I've been doing this, so much for that. So we have been bullish. We see no reason to change at this point. We are still bullish on the US dollar. Know some folks that have been long there. And uh, last I looked on risk assets as a whole, sort of a proprietary model, we have, we're sort of bullish, right? But that's, you gotta remember, this is all, what is this, right? What, what's this part down here in my hands? A look over our shoulder, right? So none of us know the future. Period, end of story, flat out, none of, none of us know the future. So when I say things like our proprietary model has a bullish bet on risk assets at the moment, that can change at any second. And it's a broad overall look at how we look at all of these different um, aspects of the market, major markets, US dollar, uh, treasuries, how we look at all of those things. And that, in turn, colors our thoughts moving forward. Does that make sense? That's sort of how we view a morning note. Or a look, uh, you know, look at the week ahead. But for now, that has been what it's always been. Let us know if you like sort of this feature. Maybe we'll do this and I'll consolidate and make my time more efficient by doing the morning note this way. I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna actually post it for the, uh, for the other guy in our closed prop firm and uh, maybe we'll do it this way. <laughs> Anyways, that has been what it's always been. It's simply been, I can't get my shoulder in here. A look over our shoulder as to our thoughts, not yours, for whatever the heck day it is. As always, stay safe, trade well, and remember that love doesn't cost a dollar.